Hi guys and welcome back. This is Crystal with Emerson Aurora Design and I'm back with this neat new design I'm going to make on a tumbler. I'm going to take scrapbook paper that I found at Hobby Lobby. I love this flower pattern here with the blue background. And I'm going to wrap this 25 ounce Hydrosport tumbler from the Stainless Depot. You can wrap any tumbler, well, you can wrap any straight tumbler with scrapbook paper just as easily as you can fabric. I wouldn't recommend doing this on a curved tumbler because the paper doesn't give like fabric does. I'm going to use Mod Podge and I'm going to apply Mod Podge directly onto my tumbler here. I put my Mod Podge in this. Um, condiment squeeze bottle. It makes it so much easier to apply and not waste so much Mod Podge. I'm just going to apply it with a foam brush in a thin even coat. If you hear chewing in the background, my dogs are having their dinner, so I apologize for that. So just spread the Mod Podge out in a nice, thin, even coat. I'm not going to worry about the bottom at this point. I'll take care of the bottom of the tumbler at a later time. Scrapbook paper is a neat alternative to fabric to put on a tumbler. There are so many different patterns and cute styles at craft stores. Um, really the sky's the limit. Plus in general scrapbook paper is a lot cheaper than fabric. So I wanted to show this example of how to um, put that on a tumbler and have it just stand out so beautifully. So here I'm just trying to lay it on straight so that um, I can get that paper on pretty straight. Um, this pattern's pretty forgiving though. You won't even really be able to tell where the seam is once it's done. So I'm going to roll that across my table. The top and the bottom is overlapping the lip of the tumbler and I will take care, show you how I take care of that here in a minute. But you want to make sure that you smooth that out really well and um, try to get out any air bubbles. Just keep rubbing it until that Mod Podge kind of adheres that to the tumbler. I'm going to trim the bottom over, like, overhanging um, section of that paper um, just to get it a little closer to the edge. And then I'll go in here later with a, a razor tool to trim that. Be really careful when you're using X-Acto blades or razor tools. Now I'm just going to hold that blade firmly with one hand and roll my tumbler um, in a natural line while I'm holding firmly. Be really careful, you don't want to cut yourself. I'm leaving about a, a little less than a quarter of an inch of stainless at the bottom of this tumbler. And it's okay, it uh, wasn't minding too much if that line was a little bit crooked because I am gonna go glitter over top of that so you won't even be able to tell if it is crooked. You can also use a cup trimming tool, a fabric trimming tool um, that you can purchase online. I just didn't have one yet. And as for the overhanging uh, ta uh, paper here, I'm going to take some painter's tape and try to make a straight line on the tumbler and that's where I'm going to cut that overhanging paper. Like I said, this pattern is pretty forgiving. Um, it's pretty busy with the flowers, so you can't even really tell where that seam is. 
Um, you just keep that in mind when you're choosing your your patterned uh, paper. So I'm just following the line of that tape down with my razor blade to get a straight line. Again, be really careful when you're using these tools. You don't want to slip and cut yourself. So this cut through to the bottom. I'm going to peel that portion up and then I will adhere it better to the cup with a little extra Mod Podge. When you're doing these type of tumblers with the construction or uh, scrap of paper, um, you want to be a little conservative with your Mod Podge. Just remember, it is paper, so the more Mod Podge you put on, the wetter the paper gets, and that could cause your um, paper to tear. I actually didn't have any issues with this one, and you shouldn't either, as long as you're choosing um, a thicker scrapbook paper, and you're just doing a thin coat of Mod Podge with each layer. I end up doing about four layers of Mod Podge total to seal this paper to the tumbler, and it turns out so pretty. You can do four or five, but it's important not to do um, too few layers because once you put your um, epoxy on your tumbler and if you don't have the paper sealed enough it can cause what look like oil spots or wet spots as the epoxy seeps through the paper so just be mindful of that um, the more coats the better really here I'm just kind of shaping that paper to the edge of my tumbler so that I have a, um, a guide to where to cut this. So I'm going to cut this top just like I did the bottom, leaving some exposed um, stainless at the top. I did cut this a little crooked, but like I said, it's okay. I'm going to go in and glitter this, but I am trying to get it as straight as possible. And you'll see I kind of fid fidget with it a little bit to get it more straight. Sometimes when I design tumblers, I have an idea in my head, um, but I, you know, kind of just wing it. <laughs> this one, I knew I wanted to put the scrapbook paper on, but I wasn't sure of the design. This tumbler is beautiful just with a scrapbook paper on, and you can just keep it like that if you like. But I'm going to go in and do some glittered stripes on this to give it a little extra bling and jazz it up because I love glitter. So you can see I'm doing really thin layer of Mod Podge here. Um, that is very important, like I said, especially with that first layer um, of coverage on the tumbler because you don't want your paper to become too saturated and stand the chance of it ripping. Make sure you get the edges really good and at the top and the bottom so that it's nice and sealed before you put your layers of epoxy on. And you also want your Mod Podge to dry completely before going on to your next layer and so forth. And don't forget, Mod Podge is water-based and if it were to be dry, if it were to be wet, before you do epoxy, you'd be in trouble. So I did put one layer of epoxy over this before this step. Here you see that I'm using my um, painter's tape to block off areas for my glitter. I'm going to do four different colors and I'm going to do the um, Mod Podge method with these. These um, fine glitters are have a uh, translucent translucence about them. Um, and it allows some of the design to show through the glitter, which I really, really like. It shows the colors through the glitters, and I was fine with that. It turns out so pretty in the end. So I'm using this white from, I believe this one's from Mr. Nola's 
and um, I'll have all of the glitters in the description below. I believe that's Cruel Juice. And then I have a pink, a blue, and a green. And I'll list those below also. These are real fine, like sugar texture um, glitters. They're so pretty. And you see the little translucence of the white and also the pink there. I do go back and do a second layer of these glitters, but I don't show that here. I chose colors that would match the tumbler and the pattern of the paper. This green is so pretty. It reminds me of um, lime sherbet ice cream, and it reminds me of summer. It's such a pretty color. And I'm going. I'm here. I'm glittering the bottom. Sorry, I go out of frame sometimes. I was having a hard time seeing where I was in frame with my camera. I'm going to let that dry completely and then I'm going to go back in and do a second coat of that glitter. And then I'm going to seal that glitter really well with uh, Rust-Oleum 2 times Clear um, Spray before my next my layer of epoxy. So before that second layer of glitter, I'm going to remove my tape so that the um, and that, you know, before it dries completely, the Mod Podge dries completely so I don't pull up any glitter. And then I'll just go back in really neatly and gently and add that second layer of glitter. I don't show the glittering of the second layer, but you get the idea. And see how pretty that is with the stripes. Matches that uh, fat, or I keep saying fabric, <laughs> scrapbook paper uh, color so well. So after I put the second layer of glitter on and I seal it really, really well because I don't want that glitter to migrate, I'm going to pop it on my turner and give it two coats of epoxy. Now it's time for my de design. I want to do stripes on the edges of the glitter to separate the glitter from the paper. So I'm using this pretty navy blue vinyl. Um, that I purchased on Amazon and I'm going to lay that down it's a wider I cut this on my Cricut it's a little bit of a wider uh, pinstripe and then I have this really beautiful rose gold um, I don't even know it's holographic I guess um, with prismic prism cut <laughs> um, kind of in like lines it's it really really helps this these lines to stand out it's really pretty you'll get a better closer look of it here in a little bit so I kind of fidget with this a little bit just to get these lines straight um, but I end up getting it in the end and I'm sorry again that I'm out of frame. I always cut these a little bit long so that way I can uh, put them on without worrying that they're matching up and then you go in with your exacto knife to trim them. I really love these 25 ounce water bottles from, or Hydro Sports, they're water bottles basically from Stainless Depot. They're my, actually my favorite tumbler. They have a nice lid with a spout and they're just perfect, you know, diameter. They're, they're tall and thin and they fit really well in your cup holder in the car. Um, they're, they're my favorite tumblers from them. Perfect for the summer. 
Here I'm just trying to get these uh, <laughs> pinstripes straight. I was kind of having a bit of a challenge. I always seem to put stripes on a little crooked, so I was trying to get it as best I could. And you can see there how much of a difference putting those pinstripes on really does. It helps um, give that glitter a border and it shows your, you know, kind of gives you a good visual of the different stripes and the depth because that paper looks like it's under glass. So it's just, I don't know, it looks nice. <laughs> So I finally figured out if I hold it straight and roll the tumbler, it did, worked out better for me. Oh well, trial and error, right? Um, I always seem, I always have challenges putting my decals on and getting them straight and doing all that. It, uh, that's why I make sure that I put it over top of a fully epoxied and dried tumbler. Um, it's just easier to pull that vinyl back off if you need to. I really like how the glitter is a little translucent. But you don't have to have it like that. You can make it solid um, and opaque. I just thought it um, lended something, a little something different. Now I'm gonna put that rose gold um, prismatic, holographic, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, vinyl on. These are from Tech Wrap, I believe. I purchased them on Amazon. I had a package of all different styles of rose gold holographic vinyl. Really pretty. I'll leave a link in, um, to that pack if I can find it in the description below. Once your vinyl stripes are down, I like to seal my tumbler again because whenever you apply any thin vinyl, you know, thin, um, thin strips of vinyl or thin letters or anything like that, they have a tendency to sometimes um, pop up under the layer of epoxy. So I do seal this tumbler before I like I put my next layer of epoxy down. You can use um, clear spray or you can use quick coat from CC DIY. I actually use um, Crystalac Bright Tone. It is a um, it is a water-based polyurethane just like the others. So after two more coats of epoxy this is what it looks like all cured and beautiful and sparkly. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you take inspiration to make your own. Thank you so much for watching. Happy crafting, everyone.